Hey guys, today I'll be showing you how to install battery backup sump pump in this video. This is currently my setup where it's a single pump and I'm always worried that uh, I'm gonna have, you know, uh, my basement flooded if uh, this pump goes wrong. So I decided to buy this Wayne sump backup pump and I heard a lot of reviews, read a lot of reviews, seems to be very good. And also I bought this Mighty Max battery that is that works with this pump so it's a separate thing that you have to buy I bought all the pipes uh, extra so I don't have to go back and forth make sure you do the same thing all the connection as I'm showing you in this video right now also you can get the prime and glue from uh, Home Depot as well and this is the one I use and there are two quiet check valves all right so here I'm just taking a wood stake and taking the measurement from uh, some pump bottom of some pump to the level of floor just so I can get idea and also this way I can create a blueprint of my project before I get started where it's gonna make a 90 degree uh, connect, uh, you know turn uh, how it's gonna connect kind of uh, things like that also once you install the check valves you have to consider the height of that once you add the check valve so consider all those factors and have a map before you start. Another check you should do is check the diameter of the sump pit and also the diameter of both sump pumps and make sure they will fit in your sump pit. Uh, it's very crucial before you start this project you want to uh, you know, end up in a situation where you're middle of something and you find out that they don't even fit together. So hopefully that won't be a situation, mostly they should fit in the sump pit but you never know all right one tip is make sure when you cut the pipes do not use this pvc cutter and because uh, it never give you a straight cut i rather suggest uh using a hacksaw and the bucket option which um, i'll show you on the image right there something like that uh, this will give you a better cut but what i ended up doing uh, for for this project was uh, using miter saw uh, because I had it home I didn't want to spend money so uh, you can use that option on miter saw to cut everything faster I guess or you know just be careful uh, have your uh, PPE uh, personal protective uh, equipment ready when you start the project prepare the glasses and things like that and uh, yeah uh, make sure measure everything use this this will definitely give you a straight cut all right once you figure out your um how you're going to cut the pipes the next part is you know uh, measuring the pipes and making sure you have you know once you because the plan is to put both the pump at the same time and make sure you start from bottom creating all the pvc pipe from bottom and go up and make your final connection on the discharge pipe that's the plan so and i'm saying because the sump pit level is never a flat surface uh, and that is the reason you may have to you have one pump setting higher than the other one that's why you need to cut pipes multiple times so in the next step i have measured uh, both uh, equally they're all about the same length i'm gonna this is where you don't connect the prime and glue uh, this is your this is how it's gonna look so you know i said in the beginning blueprint this is my blueprint of the project that's how it's gonna come out at the end so i had idea how it's gonna connect and everything so you should do the same thing before you start to make uh, all connections before you glue the pipes uh, so this is i'm showing you how it's gonna connect uh, uh, how it's gonna make l shelf and where it's gonna connect uh, I measure everything. Remember that I use the wood stick to measure the length of these pipes. This is why I used it to make sure I'm not going higher than that. Okay, so what I did, I ended up buying a new pump altogether. Uh, working new pump as you see right there. Uh, and the, the black, black pump is the battery backup pump. So I don't want to remove the pump, existing pump and uh, try figuring out how to remove the pipe and things like that and my you know my sump pump uh, my pump uh, basement is without the sump pump 
while I'm working on it. So I decided to buy a second pup anyway uh, to get, you know, idea of how everything is going to connect um, and how it's going to look. And I can measure everything, how it's going to set. So this is the time once you connect all the pipes, you want to put this pump as it is before you prime and glue anything before you move to the next step because you may end up cutting the pipes again to adjust the height. All right, so I will be removing this pump uh, just by removing these two screws. And once I remove them, I'm gonna put the pump inside as is without, before gluing the pump because I want to know how they sit and if I have to adjust the length of the pipes. So as you see, one is sitting higher than the other one. So I have to make an adjustment on the pipes. There you go. Uh, this is where you make the adjustment on the pipe. Uh, if you find out that uh, the sump pit level is uneven. And the next part is to prime and glue the pipes. So I never done it, uh, but I was successfully able to do it in the first shot. So the first couple of pipes, you get a kind of practice. Uh, this is where you learn and uh, once you get a hang of it, it's uh, pretty simple after that. So you can watch the video how I did it and I'll tell you what you need to take care of. To open the cans, um, make sure I use the can opener and I was not able to do it with the hands. I think they are pretty strong. Uh, I had to use some kind of tool and this was probably the best I could fi find. Uh, so hopefully you can find this tool helpful. I'll put the link in description. Uh, but yeah, once you open the can, next part is the gluing. And um, gluing is uh, very simple. First you put the primer and then you put the glue. Three turns of primer first, like I did. And then three turns of glue. That's what I, I did only three to four turns. You can always do more. Uh, but more is not needed, it's just wasting uh, primer and glue. So, once you're happy with the primer and glue, close the lead in between when you are working with it, and uh, quarter turn, and then match the numbers. All right, so once when you connect them, you need to do quarter turn and uh, line the numbers up like so and hold them for 15 to 20 seconds like that because they tend to push each other out uh, it creates a heat and after 15 20 seconds you just want to wipe the extra glue or primer that you have it on the connections here i'm going through rest of the pipes uh, and uh, connecting them using primer and glue so I'm just gonna fast forward uh, some of this stuff and uh, you probably see some of my mistake with the primer it's all over the pipe uh, but uh, I learned the, the same this primer seems to run a lot so just use little and that would uh, that would be less mess on the pipe uh, this is where I'm showing you quarter turn and you just saw it and line up the numbers like that. So next is uh, I'm just putting um, a white tape on the threads before I put them inside the sump pump. All right, so here I'm making a connection to the sump pump again uh, just reminding you this you only do this all this connection after you dry run let's say dry fit everything put the sump pump inside the sump pit everything looks level because as I said sump pit level is never never leveled and uh, you have a one pipe shorter one pipe is longer in the in, in the bottom uh, as I showed you earlier uh, make sure you do that part everything looks good all the pipe length everything looks fine you cut everything fine um, 
then you can join prime glue everything and this is what it uh, and it looks like uh, kind of final setup before I put them inside the sump pump and um, I'm happy with the, the height and everything with the pipes from sump pump to the 90 degree elbow and uh, I put them inside the sump pump now and everything looks good it's time for me to f find out the length between that pipe to here and that would be the next step make sure you have enough clearance for the float switch uh, always make sure that it's uh, hanging properly in the water the white one as you see there uh, make sure you adjust it properly so it's floating and all that stuff here I'm taking uh, I again dry fit connection from uh, discharge pipe I have a rubber connection so down the road if I have to remove the whole pump I can just disconnect it from there and add another pump so it's a modular setup so I can take it out put another pump put you know install another pump so this is there's a flexibility um, I'm just measuring everything here how much I have to cut and uh, you know length of pipes and things like that all right here I'm just measuring the pipes again um, just showing you how I did it I have to also extend the vertical pipe and once you know everything looks good I made a cut and connected everything as before so here is everything dry feet with the proper measurement and uh, I was happy with how it's standing and next step is to glue every, every connection uh, there's three connections actually uh, and that's about it so all right so here I made, uh, I glued and primed everything. Everything is properly connected now. So now the next part is to connect the battery to some pump, battery backup, some pump. And uh, I'll show you that next. So uh, I'm showing you how the connections are being made. Uh, so that's the power comes from outlet. Uh, that's from the switch, that cable, um, that's from the switch, uh, yeah, that's some pump, I'm sorry, that's a some pump connection, and uh, that's a float switch. And that's pretty much it, it's only three connections you have to make, and connect this wires uh, there is a red and black wire that you have to connect to the battery like so and here I made the connection uh, to a battery red wire goes to the plus sign and the black wire goes to the minus sign negative terminal, positive terminal, that's what I meant. All right, so that was the sound of the battery backup sump pump. It's uh, not that loud and it triggers the sound when you it hits the yellow switch, which I'll show you in the next clip. And one last tip is before you test your battery backup, make sure your main sump pump is working fine and, and make sure it discharge the water fine before you test your battery backup and that's about it here I'm just showing you the connection one last time and okay so hopefully you find this video useful don't forget to like subscribe for a future video 
and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.